first of all, let's talk about Austin. One thing we all t- we talk about here on the Metal Injection Livecast, we all live in Brooklyn, New York, and uh, we long for the old New York. Uh, uh, and it's, yeah. it's kind of a similar, a similar situation uh, that you're saying where, like, you know, housing is completely unaffordable. Uh, yeah. and, and it's like, it's the same thing with us. Like, you know, you have to, you can get a dump, but like the price is actually like twice, twice as much here in New York. But dude, like I know people in Brooklyn that are moving to Manhattan because it's cheaper now. Yes. It's crazy. I, 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 it's I know my first nuts. person today who's, wow. who's doing that. <laughs> He's a stand-up comedian. So, but that's what I wanted to ask. Like, what was, like, I never quite really experienced the old Austin. I, my experiences of Austin are limited mostly to uh, South by Southwest, which I know is like a poor representation of what Austin Rob is really is. Rob is part of the problem. Uh, totally. Well, part I stopped, of the problem. I stopped going. Uh, but uh, I wanted to know, like, what, what was the, like, what was Austin like before it sold out? Okay, um, I, I've got actually a lot to say about this because when I moved to Austin in in the year two thousand, are you from Texas zero, originally, or where, where were you I was? Right? I was born in San Antonio, and then I okay. when I, my I, I was about eight or nine, my family moved out to Midland Odessa area. Um, the, you know, the Friday Night Lights and all that kind of stuff is out there, and uh, it's a pretty miserable place um, to grow up and try to play music, especially if you're into punk rock and things like that. Um, there's just not a lot going on. Um, but, and I didn't have enough money to move to LA or New York whenever I wanted to leave home to play music. So Austin is the city you go to whenever, you know, that's, you just want to play music for a living and you live in Texas. Um, and when I got here in 2000, people have that mentality already of like, it's over. It's not, it used to be way cooler in the nineties. And then like, I just, I, eventually after I got to know a whole lot of people that have been here forever, they're like, people have been saying that since the sixties and the sixties, like, hey, it's over. 70s that's uh, over used to be cool 80s used to be cool now it's, it's it's always been just a group of people just bagging on the new wave of the of people that come in austin's a lot like um i guess it's a lot like brooklyn i think austin and brooklyn have an exchange program uh going <laughs> we're like yeah that's I, mean, a lot I, like I, I spent a year in brooklyn i had a great yeah. time i was living off of fulton uh, down in uh, clinton hill area and i had a great time um nice. but uh it's it's certainly different than it used to be and uh, austin so Back when I first moved here, uh, there was about 500,000 people that lived in Austin. Now there's about two and a half million. Mm -hmm. So it's, it is crazy. Um, A lot of the tech companies that moved here uh, drove the prices of the houses just up through the roof out of control. You know, uh, uh, it turned into, it it used to be a music town. It really did. You know, seven nights a week there, even on a Monday night, there was a hundred shows going on. On a Saturday night, there was a thousand shows. It was just crazy. You couldn't go anywhere without hearing music. And it kind of turned into a food town. Uh, it, it just like, you know, people, they stopped wanting to hang out at crappy dive bars, like stuffed with cigarette smoke. And so they wanted to like go out and have a nice evening on the patio and enjoy like a very expensive dinner and uh, have their elbow room. And so like, I don't know, it just became a, a lot more of like a, a creature comfort kind of town rather than a just you know do anything to go to a show kind of town and south by was you know a lot of people bag on it but i the sword was one of those bands that got a lot out of it um the the idea of south by southwest was to um, it was basically a festival invented by a bunch of journalists who had nothing to write about during spring break and so they created their own festival uh to bring you know hundreds and hundreds of unsigned bands to austin to get them some coverage and just hopefully get them a record deal or something. And event- just like anything else, it eventually just gets to the point where Doritos is running the show. And there it's just like, you know, I remember the first year that it felt like it wasn't South by anymore. I think it was 2003 or four, maybe um, I, I was, I was looking at the lineup of bands playing and uh, I, you know, I used to keep up with like all the underground bands in, in the country and stuff like that. And I would get really excited when, you know, like Wolf Mother played and like nobody knew who they were. They had one EP out that was like a thing and it was just like, oh, cool, M- Wolf Mother's playing. Or um, when Big Business first came out, it was like, I was a huge uh, Carp fan and everything. And it's like, you, you know, you didn't really know who Big Business was or whatever. But I remember back in, I think it was 2004, I was reading the lineup and it was Beastie Boys were playing. I was like, what the hell are Beastie Boys playing South by Southwest for? I mean, don't get me wrong. I love Beastie Boys. They're probably the coolest dudes that ever played a show. But, you know, I was, this isn't your festival, man. Like, what are you doing? And then it just eventually, uh, I think Lady Gaga, like, played a show downtown where she, like, you know, made herself throw up on her drummer and stuff. And then, like, I, it was just, it got to the point where it was just, like, you couldn't, like, 
if you were an unsigned band going to the South by Southwest was a total waste of your time and money. And um, it was sad because it was such a cool festival at heart, but it eventually like kind of came around. It, it, I remember the last year or two, it sort of felt like there weren't as many people in town. And it was, uh, I remember there was a sticker around town that was that South by South where <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was funny, but it was a huge part of um, getting Austin on the map. And, and turning it into one of those kind of places where it's just sort of like a tourist stop where it seems like I, I couldn't go anywhere in the world uh, without people saying, oh, you're from Austin? Oh, I love Austin. I went there for blah, 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 or whatever. It just sort of yeah, it just became, I don't yeah. know, like a, 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 very similar a, story a, to a, city, a city of the world, not really a city of Texas, you know? Yeah. 